How's everybody doing tonight? We're running behind, and that's all my fault. Oh. Dave, take prayer requests. Dave, Dave, take prayer requests. Be right back. He won't be gone. That, I won't be gone that long. Is that Dave? We just got rich. Oh. Oh, really? Remember, brother Richie, in your prayers. Good job, Dave. Richie, Tony Emery did well through his surgery. Um, that's what we got. What's her name? Good. Amen. We'll remember her. Amen. Everyone. Richard. Okay, remember Tony Davis, tongue cancer. Marcel? Well, my son got all grandkids for so far. Mm-hmm. But I also got a praise the Lord. Well, we prayed for that, didn't we? Amen. I read into a man at Walmart a little while ago, and he said he used to go here, and his mother passed away last year, and her name was Charlotte. Mm-hmm. And he came up to me like four or five times at Walmart and just kept talking and said, Well, do I know you from? And I don't know And it was just like a magnet. He just, you know, he kept. Uh, Did you invite him to come back? I did. Good. And Okay. 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 Amen. Our son Will started a new job in Fort Lauderdale. And he's also been witness to some of his co-workers that have been pretty receptive. Pray that he's improved there. Amen. Remember Will? Remember Melody's granddaughter Avery battling serious health conditions, trying to get into a clinic down in Tennessee. Jacob? Okay. Dave? Jacob? Ben Gunner. Alana Oster and Ben Gunner. Lewis? Remember Saturday, we're going to be having the funeral here for Deborah Robertson, who is Aiden's mother, who passed away in that car wreck on 37 a week or so ago. Remember that family in your prayers? Remember Bonnie Gilbert and Barbara? Barbara Colsey. Les, did you have your hand raised? I'm sorry. Remember Brother Les's family? Remember our elections that are coming up next week? Brother Victor? Kathy? Kathy in Maryland? She did? Okay. Shirley?
Colton Brandon, little boy at Jefferson School, lung issues. Absolutely. Brother Bob? Elections. Elections are coming up next Tuesday. I want to remember those, continue to pray for those, and remember next Tuesday to go out and vote and take somebody with you. I didn't know anything about that. Okay. Jeff. Jerry Shell, hip cancer. Have not. We want to remember, I'm going to tell you just a couple things um, before we pray here. First of all, um, yeah, I've been talking about Cody Hiller in our church here. I know several other people have. He's the PE teacher at West Frankfurt High School. Um, and I got this text from him yesterday and I told him that I would share it with you guys tonight. And he says, hey, Brother Andy, uh, board meeting is scheduled for Thursday night at 6 p.m. in the gymnasium at the Intermediate School in West Frankfurt. The meeting is open to the public and will determine the discipline of the student who didn't want the girl in the locker room. It also is a remediation meeting for my situation. From what I've been told, it means they want me to stop talking about this issue and what happens if I don't. They will talk with me in closed session. Ryan, the student's father, and I would love to see as many people there as possible. There will be another meeting at a later date, unknown on the disciplinary actions they'll take from me. Please, spread, please share this with your church and ask them to support us. Thank you again for your support and your prayers, Cody. So if you'd like to go and support him tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, in West Frankfurt at their elementary school, their intermediate school, which if you go past the high rise in West Frankfurt, take a left. It's right down there near your right at the gymnasium at six o'clock. It'd be a well worthy cause. Okay? And if you would like to follow me up there, I'll be leaving here at the church. At, I'll be leaving the church at 5 30. Yes, ma'am. Along this same line, uh, the non municipal elections, so school board, elections, and all that, you can now go and get a petition. Want to run? Now's the time. Now's the time to step up. Park board, county, city council, library board. Amen. Board. Amen. Also, another prayer request. I was just, um, before I came in here, I got a call from Angela Michaels, who we go and stand with at the abortion clinics, who runs the ultrasound van machine. And when we go to Planned Parenthood, we park in this parking lot that is beside Planned Parenthood, um, and they have restrooms there we can use. Well, anyway, they got, they got told that this afternoon that we're, nobody's allowed to park in that parking lot anymore, which is going to be a huge logistics problem for everybody there. So um, I told them we'd pray about it. Amen. Logan? Let's pray, okay?
sad. Let's pray. Son, grace is with you tonight. (laughs) Heavenly Father, God, we're thankful, Lord, that we can gather in this room tonight. We're thankful, Lord, for what you've done in our lives and what you are doing. God, we know there are many, 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 many needs tonight. We know there are many circumstances and many situations that God need your intervention and your touch. And so, God, tonight we call them out to you. You know these situations. We've announced them out loud. God, for those who are struggling with health issues, we pray to your God, Lord, that you would touch their bodies. Those who are waiting on tests or recovering from surgeries or going through a sickness of whatever kind, whether it be cancer or, um, Lord, something of that nature. We just pray to your God, your touch upon them. We pray, God, that you'd be with them in a very special way. We know, Lord, that your word says that you are the God that healeth thee. It tells us in Psalm that you're a very present help in time of trouble, God, that you never leave us and you never forsake us. And so tonight, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray a touch upon these folks' lives. We pray, dear God, Lord, that you touch them, whether it be through your divine intervention, through doctors and medicines. We just pray, dear God, a touch upon them right now in Jesus' name. God, we pray for the social issues that um, our communities are facing, our state is facing, our nation is facing. God, we see immorality that is uh, running rampant. And God, it does not seem natural. It does not seem right. And uh, Lord, I know that... Everybody in this room tonight is upset by the things that we're hearing and the things that we're seeing unfold before our very eyes. God, we know, Lord, that this is a sign of the times. We know, God, that um, when sin is allowed to go as long as it has, we see judgment come. And so, Lord, we pray, God, for those who are willing to stand up and do right and speak up and speak out. God, tonight I pray a special anointing upon Cody Hiller. I pray, God, you continue to give that young man the power just to stand. And I pray, dear Lord, that you would not let him be discouraged, not let him feel ridicule. I pray, dear God, that tomorrow night there will be many people who will come and support him. I pray most of all that your Holy Spirit will lift him up and encourage him, give him words to say, wisdom beyond his years, knowledge that he didn't even think that he had. I pray, God, you anoint his lips. I pray for those who are on that school board. I pray, dear God, Lord, that they would make the right decision, the good decision. I pray, God, they would not, they would do what's hard and not what's easy. I pray they would not bow to bell, but they would stand up for the good things of life and the good things of God and normality. I pray, God, for this, this, this girl who is going through this confusion. We pray, dear God, Lord, for her tonight. Um, God, we know, Lord, that there's got to be a lot there. We just pray, God, a special anointing upon her, God, that she might realize who, who you created her to be and realize that you, you're, you don't make mistakes. And, Lord, you have a plan and a purpose. And so, God, tonight we lift her up to you. Um, God, as Becky alluded to, we know, that God, that financially there are many crazy things that we see uh, promoted. And, uh, Lord, we want fairness. We want honesty. We want to take care of those who stand in need. But at the same time, Lord, nobody wants to be robbed or uh, misused. And so, Lord, I, I pray to God, Lord, wisdom and direction in our state, in our nation. We pray for these upcoming elections. We know, God, that um, it's a hinge point. And Lord, I pray, God, that next Tuesday that we will see Christians rise up and vote. Um, Lord, every poll um, in our state says that there's no chance that it will not return to the current governor. Um, but Lord, we know, God, that you you elect people and it has to come through your table, has to come through your chair. And so, Lord, God, we're asking your help. And I pray, Lord, that people would vote and, and vote their, 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 their biblical values, Lord, and not their pocketbook or... Um, not not something of, of lesser value. And so, Lord, we, we just pray that tonight. God, I thank you for our time here tonight as we continue to dive in uh, to engaging with our culture. Pray, Lord, that you would lead our conversation and lead our study. And we just thank you for what you have done and what you are doing in the life of our church. God, tonight I pray for the Michaels and the ministry they have at the abortion clinics. Um, Lord, I, I, I can't even imagine what they face each day being in the trenches every single day. I know every six weeks we go up there, I despise going that morning. Um, But Lord, I I know, God, that there are a voice out there that's offering hope to those who don't have it. And so, Lord, I I pray, God, that you would work out this parking issue, this logistic issue. God, that they might be able to stand out there and reach out and help save more babies um, and and give more life. And so, Lord, I, I pray, God, that you just open the doors that needs to the things that need to happen there. Uh, Lord, just touch that situation. Um, God, I pray for Aiden's family, especially this coming Saturday as they lay his mother to rest. And we pray, God, that you'd speak peace to them in the midst of this horrible situation. You would help them in their new reality. And and God, I know that it must seem very surreal to them. And so, Lord, we just pray, God, your continued touch. 
Lord, we thank You for all that You have done and all that You are doing. And we ask all this in Jesus' name that we all said, Amen. Amen. We'll let you know too that Susan Hunter got to come off the ventilator. So we praise the Lord for that. Um, So continue to remember her in your prayers. And also Hannah Hunter requested prayer today um, for the baby in her womb. They found a heart defect. And so if you could remember her as well. Yes, sir. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. We live in a tough world right now. All right. Well, let's do some trivia. Who won last time? It was a tie last week. Pastor Appreciation. Praise the Lord for that. We do not want the church to be split. Okay. These are fairly easy questions tonight, Brother Bob. Okay. 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 That's fine. Can you name the third king on Jerusalem's side that Jeroboam would have had as an uncle? You want me to go ahead and give them their question? Can you spell Bible? <laughs> All right. Real question. <laughs> what did Sarah and Hannah have in common with respect to childbirth? What did Sarah and Hannah have in common with respect to childbirth? They were both barren. Great job. Great job, Jacob. Who was Samuel's predecessor as high priest of Israel? Eli. In what two books is a symbolic beast with ten horns described? And what two books is a symbolic beast with ten horns described? Daniel and Revelation. Great job, Logan. I'm going to need one person here, so you guys need to point it after I ask the question. Spell Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel. Go ahead, Jan. Give it to us. It's two B's. Zerub but Babel. Zerub Babel. Okay. How many talents did the first servant in Jesus' parable end up with at the very end of the parable? How many talents did the first servant in Jesus' parable end up with at the very end of the parable?
Now what he says, 10. You guys good with that? It's 11. <laughs> 11. Quote the next sentence of Jesus after he said, Woman, behold thy son. Quote the next sentence of Jesus after he said, Woman, behold thy son. Richard, you have your hand raised. Yeah. What? Very good. All right. Yeah. I thought you said father there for a second. It was like a little stutter step. Son, behold thy mother. In which book is the following line attributed to God? I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will have compassion on whom I'll have compassion. In which book is the following line attributed to God? I will have mercy on whom I'll have mercy. Calvinist's favorite verse. What's the score? Two to two? Okay. I've been forgetting to keep a score. I don't know. Which, in which book is the following line attributed to God? I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Genesis is incorrect. It was Romans. What motivated Moses to break the tablets of the Ten Commandments? What motivated Moses to break the tablets of the Ten Commandments? Golden calf, very good. What important edict related to Jewish destiny did Artaxerxes decree in 445 B.C.? What important edict related to Jewish destiny did Artaxerxes decree in 445 B.C.? What important edict? In what, impor what important edict related to Jewish destiny did Artaxerxes decree in 445 B.C. I need an answer. Melody said they was going to kill them all. You don't want to go with that? That's not right. Now, no, it's not. You guys should know this. Because we spent 52 days doing this. Rebuilding the wall. Thinking. Yeah, they do. <laughs> you make a good point, but I didn't write the card. <laughs> and Heather, why didn't you speak up? 
<laughs> like after I gave the answer. <laughs> what score? You guys are winning? Greg, did you say that? You're not on this side. You're neutral. Oh, okay. I thought you said we were winning. <laughs> what nation does prophecy say will be defeated by Israel, aided by an earthquake? What nation does prophecy say will be defeated by Israel, aided by an earthquake? An earthquake? Magog. <laughs> I thought you would surely have that one. Alright, this might be a hard one. Who was Jonathan's best friend? David? <laughs> he patted himself. <laughs> Correct. So that's three to three? Over what length of time did Jesus appear to do to his disciples after the resurrection? After, over what length of time did Jesus appear to his disciples after his resurrection? Forty is correct. Forty days. Four to three, final two questions. What were the last words of Jesus on the cross recorded in Matthew and Mark? What were the last words of Jesus on the cross recorded in Matthew and Mark? Is that your answer? It is finished? It's incorrect. It's my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? What did you say? It is finished. For the talent question, um, Matthew 25, 28. Which book in the New Testament describes the required characteristics of a deacon? Richard, Larry, Donnie. Which book requires it? You guys can't answer this one. You can't answer it. It's going to the deacon row. What, which book in the Bible describes the characteristics for a deacon? All right, Bob, you can help him. Bob, you can help him. Timothy, correct. You guys win tonight. Pass these out one. Yeah, it's passing. Oh, here. I didn't give you enough. I'm sorry. I'll give you, you're going to need more. Amen. So these past few weeks, we've been going over different stuff. i got another handout for you. We've been talking about culture and engaging culture, issues that we deal with in culture. Tonight, I want to talk to you about technology. How many of you have ever heard of technology? Charlie, what's your favorite technology currently? What makes your world easy? Air conditioning? How many of you like that one? How many of you grew up without air conditioning? And you all made it? So let me ask you this. I feel like if you didn't have air conditioning, it would have been easier because you didn't know what you were missing. Is that kind of true? I mean, if you, unless you've had, I mean, if you've never had cool air, you're like, yeah, you know, you're kind of used to it. So Charlie, 
What is your favorite technology right now? Your dishwasher. How many of you like the dishwasher in your house? Amen. Woo! How many of you are old enough that you remember like washing clothes on like a washboard? Martha, you took it back. How many of you remember? Gloria, you remember doing that? Did you ever do it yourself? Was that? Do you like the the washing machine better? Okay. Amen. Okay. You pumped water from a well. Okay. Uh, indoor bathroom. How many were grew up without an indoor bathroom? Wow, y'all are old. Uh, <laughs> outhouse. Yeah. When did indoor bathrooms become prevalent? Dave, did you have an indoor bathroom when you were little? You did. So you're not that old. Yes. Here, David, they need more. Dave's still got some. Jan? You remember the icebox? How many of you grew up without a, an actual refrigerator? Yeah. So when I was... Uh, we went down... Dad always tells the story that... Uh, down in Mississippi, he would live with his grandparents. And um, what was that show? Uh, no, not The Godfather. Yes, is it Sanford and Son? Anyway, is that the, what you doing, Lewis? What you talking about, Lewis? Is that it? What is that? Different strokes, thank you, there it is, yeah. So anyway, Dad always tells about him and his cousin down at his grandparents' house in Mississippi, and they had this antenna that was right outside the door, and they told it got fuzzy during different strokes, and his grandpa said, son, go out there and hold that antenna, and he got to like right here at the door, and it cleared up. He's like, he's like okay, he's like, just stand there. And so for like 30 minutes... They have to stand there because, you know, Grandpa said to stand there. Uh, I can remember when I was a kid, we would go to uh, Family Video, which is not the Family Video that closed down. There used to be like a Family Video where Matrix Tools went in. You guys remember that? And man, that was a cool Friday night. You'd go in there and pick a movie and you'd go pop it in the VCR. But our VCR would overheat, so after a little while, you'd have to turn on the hairdryer. <laughs> Did anybody else have to do that? No? Okay. Um, y'all remember those TVs that look like big boxes? Yeah. How many of you still have one of those? Logan, you do? <laughs> Does your? Does he still watch it? Yeah. How many remember when Gunsmoke first came out? How many of you still watch Gunsmoke? <laughs> Amen. How many of you? How many of you remember those phones that you had to? The rotary ones. Yeah. Are any of you old enough to like you had to do the party line? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> a stokematic? I've never even heard of a stokematic. How many of you had a stokematic? Don't ask. <laughs> Don't ask. That's okay. We'll get to it. We don't want to get too far off here. We could go down memory lane tonight now. I'm telling you. I, 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 you missed a lot. Amen. Um, how many of you? <laughs> um, Caleb recently got a Jeep and Jack got in it. And he, he's like, hey. He said, Caleb? The windows don't roll down. <laughs> and he's Jack, and Caleb looks like, he's like, Jack, move that thing around. <laughs> but, you know, we think that's funny, but if you've never seen it, you know what I mean? You just don't know. Um, so, I'm going to throw some scripture in here in just a little while, but we're going to work off this sheet for just a little bit. Every one of us in this room are affected by technology. Period. 
Um, we always have been. Technology's always been part of our life. Technology was part, it was in biblical days. And over throughout history, we've seen advancements on technology. Um, Dave, back when you were a kid, they invented the wheel. <laughs> right? Um, these were big, big issues. The pulley and the chain. Um, the incline. Um, throughout history, we've seen technological advances. And ultimately, technology always makes things easier, or they should. It, technology comes from the Greek word techni for art or craft. Technilogia is a discourse about a systematic treatment of an art or technique. Technology, the application of techniques employed to solve human problems. Um, necessity, Dave always tells me, necessity is the mother of invention. So, in our day and time that we live in now, we see something called informational technology. The use of computer systems for collecting, storing, accessing, and retrieving data. I'll give you a cyber culture definition. The modern values, habits, and social conditions brought by the widespread use of the internet. So, um, in 2012, there was a man named Steve Jobs who... Um, stood on a stage in, in, in California and he held up something like this, but it was a little bit smaller and just a little bit different back then. And he says, I have something that's going to revolutionize the world. And he called it a smartphone or an iPhone. Um, and nobody knew in 2011, 2012, what he really actually meant. Um, and then all of a sudden, everybody started to get smartphones. Now, I don't know how many people are in here probably 50 or 60, but let's take a quick poll. How many of you have a smartphone? Just raise your hand. Okay, let's do better. How many people don't? Four. Okay, I don't, I, I know, I know. Amen, I'm not firing you up. Amen, I'm with you. Amen, sis, okay? I've tried to get her to get one for years. That ain't happening, amen? I'll tell you later. Um... But a smartphone, <laughs> amen, you guys see what I'm saying? Everything okay, Frank? Okay. So smartphones, um, pretty much in the last 10 years, have revolutionized the way we live. Now you can say, well, it hasn't affected my life, but it, even if you don't own one, it's affected your life. Um, a smartphone is what we would consider informational technology. What I used to not know, I can know in about 30 seconds. You can ask me any question in the world, and I can find it out just like that. Um, you place it in my hand, I'm able to do algebra all of a sudden. Amen? I can communicate in almost every language there is. Um, I can send messages from here around the world in a matter of a second. It's pretty amazing. In fact, it really kind of resembles a story, but we'll get to that onward down. Um, technology has good sides. It has improved medical care. How many of you think that there's better actual, and don't get started on hospitals now, don't get running down that. <laughs> But we have a lot more advancements in medicine now than we did, say, 30 years ago. Uh, we're making strides. Um, if Maria were here tonight, she would talk to you about the advancements in cancer. Um, and she was sharing just a little a few weeks ago about how even since she's been at the cancer center, the, the advancements they've seen. Um, surgeries. Um, used to, I can remember uh, when my mother had, or my grandfather had a knee, a knee replacement, it was a humongous deal where he had to be in the hospital for like, I don't know, three, four weeks. Um, and now, they're sending him home the same day. You're like, hey, you're done. Um, it's amazing the things that have, 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 have progressed. Um, <laughs> when I wrote this, I really wasn't thinking about the inflationary rate that we live in today. Um, it's lowered the cost of necessary goods. Or at least it did. Um, it's improved security. 
Um, now, if somebody was to break in, say, here to the church, um, we could get an alert and we would know from our homes. Um, many of you have cameras on your porches. If somebody walks by your front door, it pops up on your phone. Somebody's at your front door. Um, carbon monoxide levels. How many of you have a carbon monoxide detector in your home that'll beep, you know, if the level's too big? Um, it's increased our comfort. Praise God for air conditioning. Um, praise God for indoor toilets. Um, praise God for hot hot water heaters. Um, did you guys have those when you were a kid? Hot water heaters? Did you take cold showers? Okay, all right. Okay, all right. It drove down the cost of communication. When I was when I was a kid, I remember making a long distance call was a huge deal. And like, do you remember on television they were like, you know, the long distance companies they would fight back and forth. And then I can remember when like cell phones first came out. Like after eight eight o'clock, you could talk with unlimited from like eight to eight eight, 8 p.m. to eight a.m. and on weekends. Do you remember that? Um, because prime rates were so such a big deal. Um, I I don't remember, but. Wasn't it at one point even in our area, like from like if, if you were to call like West Frankfurt to like Goreville was long distance, if I remember it correctly. Um, so it, it's drove down the cost of the communication. It essentially costs nothing to communicate anymore. Um, it's helped us learn easier. Technology has, has made great advancements in actually learning information. Um, however, there are bad sides to technology probably far more bad sides than I think probably that are good sides. Um, and I just want to point out a few of them tonight and talk about culture and um, we'll be done. Um, too much information can be distracting. Have you ever been distracted by too much information? Yes. Um, as of, this, is, this, is, this is the statistics from 2009, but I, this has got to be way past this now. As of 2009, the cost of information overload was about $900 billion per year. And you think, how do they get cost on that? But I don't know if you've ever been working at your desk, like for your employer, and you got a text, and you stopped and read the text as opposed to doing your work. Anybody ever been guilty of that? And you stopped doing <laughs> Tell on yourself, amen? Or maybe you just want to check something, next thing you know you're scrolling for 20 minutes, but your employer's paying you for 20 minutes, Right? Um, informational technology not only it distracts us but it can hurt the depth of communication um, many people and I don't think this is about these people in this room but especially when you talk to younger folks what I've learned just from teaching two classes is that younger folks have a serious problem with this many people have lost the ability to talk face to face um, and there's something to be said that can have a conversation when you can look somebody in the eye, you can sense their tone, you can sense their gestures, you can sense their facial expressions. Um, cleverly worded social media posts and edited photographs have replaced transparency and vulnerability. Um, have, have you ever been to a place where like, you're afraid to stand up and speak in front of people? Do you remember feelings like that? I can remember when I was a kid, speech class, I had a bad speech impediment. I stuldered bad, um, and I didn't I, I, it was a, I never thought I'd be a public speaker because I was scared to death to speak in front of people. Um, I didn't like to talk to people face to face because when I did, I stuttered very, very badly. Um, and somehow or another, over the years through speech therapy, I grew out of it. Um, but even in our, our classes today or our people today, there's still a number, a number one fear of a lot of people is standing up and speaking to people. Um, even when you I know with Caleb and Jack raising them, one of the I would, hey, go talk to that person, and, and they have really bad um, about mumbling or putting their hand on him and him and something like this. But it's something to be able to raise up a child and to get them to look somebody in the eye and stead their shoulders back and speak clearly and announce. And there's something about a confidence level that comes with that. There's no conf, there's, there's something about vulnerability that comes with that as well. You know what I mean? That's a, for a lot of people, that's a scary moment. You've got to work your way into that, right? Um, if you have a keyboard or a phone, that doesn't really take, it's a lot easier. Does that make sense? People become empowered with keyboards. It's like they'll say anything and like, pop, pop, and then if they get really mad and authoritative, they'll start tapping the keyboard fast. 
Text messaging has allowed for more frequent communication with our family and friends, but messages are usually shorter and less substantive. Hey, how are you? K? You're K? Okay. Did you hear from so and so today? How are they? They're K. Does K really tell somebody how you are? Does it tell them what you're struggling with? Does it tell them what you're dealing with spiritually or emotionally or physically or financially or anything substantive about your life? But no. Um, so we, we talk to a lot more people, but about less substantial things. Um, people become focused on trivial communication from a distance that they live, they lose, they lose, that's not load, they lose focus of their immediate surroundings. Um, if you go into most families in America of an evening, you'll see anywhere from four to six people who are sitting in a family room, not communicating with each other, but communicating with machines, and they're spending time together, but they're not really spending time together. Right? And so, now are they talking about anything great? No. Are they solving any world problems? No. But trivial communication makes you focus less on those who are immediately around you. Um, informational technology has made us more narrow-minded. Um, informational technology does, doesn't create intolerance. It exposes it and enables it. Um, and I'm not a huge fan of, of tolerance, obviously. But I also think that if you are only doing and only finding out what you want to find out, then it's going to keep you from knowing what else is out there. Does that make sense? So if all I hear is cursing all day, I'm not going to know about the good stuff. Um, and technology has, it gives you an ability to be master of your own universe. Um, if you don't like it, you move it. Um, you never have to have a disagreeing opinion. You can just go to another site, go to a different song. Um, we communicate and interact with only who we want and when we want. It gives us the illusion that we're in control of the world and don't have to bother with the inconvenience of different worldviews or people. Access to 24-7 technology stills innocence by constantly composing us to degrading, demeaning, perverse content. Um, here is the risk with technology. If we fail to cultivate habits of the heart, such as discernment, moderation, wisdom, humility, authenticity, and diversity, we risk losing a sense of what it means to bear God's image well. And in the process, lose sight of what the good life is and what it means to be humans. And so let's look real quick in Scripture um, to Genesis chapter 11 before we finish off tonight. In Genesis chapter 11, it tells the story about the Tower of Babel. How many of you ever remember the Tower of Babel? And it says in verse 1 of chapter 11, it says, At one time, all the people of the world spoke the same language and they used the same words. As the people migrated to the east, they found a plain in the land of Babylonia and settled there. They began saying to each other, let's make bricks and harden them with fire. In this region, bricks were used instead of stone and tar was used for mortar. And they said, come, let's build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches into the sky. This will make us famous and keep us from being scattered all over the world. But the Lord came down to look at the city and the tower the people were building. Look, He said, the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Come, let's go down and confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. In that way, the Lord scattered them all over the world and then they stopped building the city that is why the city was called Babel. Because that is where the Lord confused people with different languages. In this way, He scattered them all over the world. And so before Genesis chapter 11, verse 1, there was no us and them. There was no black and white. There was no American and Chinese. There was no um, you and they. Everybody was one person. They were united. The languages were the same. They were in the same area. And because of that, they were able to accomplish some pretty cool things. They were building a tower that they wanted to reach all the way into heaven. And apparently, in that day and time, they were doing a pretty good job of it. Amen? Now, I can't imagine, we've, if you've ever seen like the towers of Giza and things like that, you've seen the things beginning to take place. But ultimately, we see things begin to grow up and grow out. Um, but they had this ideology that they didn't need God. And I will tell you that technology 
gets to the point where how far does technology need to go? And it gets to the point where it replaces and we become more dependent on technology and what we know than who we know. And when we look at Babel, God said, you know what? You've got to realize that there's a creator of this world and I'm He. And anybody who thinks they're better than God, it took Him one, one snap to scatter them around the world and confuse their languages. And as technology grows, we got to always remember that when we're involved in technology, technology has some great benefits. But we are not masters of our own world. God's the creator of all things. God's worthy of our worship. And while technology can bring some really good things, it can bring some really bad things. Here's some technological temptations that we deal with. Information technology tempts us to lose focus. It's easy to find ourselves working, texting, surfing the internet, listening to music, and trying to pay attention to a conversation all at the same time. Have you ever tried to do that? It doesn't work. We are so accessible, we become inaccessible. Have you ever tried to talk to somebody and they wouldn't get off their phone long enough to listen to you? And you wanted to go shake them? Amen? Information technology tempts us, tempts us to isolate ourselves. Though surface technology seems to facilitate communication, it can divide us by helping us avoid all those who aren't like us or keep us from, convert, keep us from communication. I mean, you think of all the things you can do now by yourself. You can shop and not have to go in a store. You can go to church and not have to leave your living room. Amen? In fact, technology has made it where you can work from home, you can go to school from home, you can go to church from home, you can shop from home, you can never have to leave your house again. Now, you're not going to be involved in much of a community if you never leave yourself again, right? I remember the days of my grandma's house, 406 North Buchanan, even on, especially on days like this where it was mild outside, there might be a fire going out front, and every neighbor on that block would be sitting in my, grandf my grandfather's front yard. And when you walk through neighborhoods any more, more often than not, you don't see people gathered in yards. You see people gathered in their homes on their phones. We've lost the ability to communicate. How long can a person survive this level of fragmentation? Information seems to improve communication with people who are central to our lives, but damage communication with those who, who are truly central. Um, I talked to a boy this afternoon who I went to college with. I hadn't talked, to him, talked with him in over three years. He called me. He said, hey, he sent me a message on Facebook. He said, hey, can I get your number? We talked. We caught up. Um, and it was great to hear from him. It was a great advantage of technology that I could talk to an old college roommate. Um, but at the same time, those conversations are great, but they're not great if I'm ignoring people directly in my life. Does that make sense? And what happens is we're so worried about this trivial communication that we fail to keep what's central right in our lives. Informational technology tempts us to be superficial. God designed person-to-person -person communication to be profoundly meaningful. Technology permits us to observe more and communicate less. No generation in human history, listen to this part, no generations in human history have experienced so many technological enhancements and yielded so little mental progress. Amen? We think it should really make us smarter, but really we're ending up dumber. Amen? Dave can build a bridge by looking at a piece of paper with his hands. I can look up how to build a bridge, but guess what? Not the same. Informational technology tempts us to give in to evil. Deception is one kind of evil that new technology has made more common. Um... Every sense of technology, we see evil that is just promoted throughout it. Um, the Apostle Paul said all things were um, all things were lawful, but not all things were profitable. Um, and so, technology can be very great in our lives, but it doesn't mean that all of it's profitable. Um, if it costs you your soul, it's not worth nothing. If it costs you your marriage, it's not worth nothing. If it costs you your children, it's not worth nothing. If it costs you your relationship with people, it's really not worth nothing. If it costs you your relationship with church people, it's really not worth nothing. And you can say, well, it's done all this for me, but yeah, but look at the cost. It's cost a lot. Um, the evil that creeps through through technology from sexual promiscuity to hatred um, to pride 
to arrogance, to lust, to uh, jealousy, uh, to lies and deceit, to hatefulness. Um, we could have an endless list of sins that promote uh, the technology promotes, and every one of them are very easy to fall into. Um, technology has become an object of worship for many people. If you want to find out what you worship, you find out where you spend the most of your time. You spend out where you find out where you spend the most of your resources. And what I've learned here in the past, you find out what you'll turn around and go get if you leave home without it. Amen? And so, I'll close this tonight by saying, technology is a great thing, but if you worship it, it's replaced somebody in your life named God. It needs to be very first. Amen? All right. It's 7.33. Next week at this time, it'll be 6.33. See, people don't like the time change. I do. And here's the reason why. Because you can hunt and be out of the woods by 5.30. And you're not losing any time. You know what I'm saying? It's great. All right. All right. Love you guys. God bless you. Hey, if you want to go up there tomorrow night, I'll meet here at 5.30 and be leaving. Okay? Or you can just meet up there. Love you guys. Have a great night.